Hello, I'm Dr. Steve Hammond. I'm a board certified obstetrician gynecologist. I've been in practice for over 40 years and I've delivered over 4,000 babies during my career. I've also taken part in the evaluation of at least 20,000 pregnant women in a group practice. Early in my career, I did over 700 abortions. I want to tell you the story of why I stopped doing abortions and why I'm now a spokesman for the pro-life movement. I started, uh, I guess we need to start at the beginning. Uh, I was raised in a small town in rural West Tennessee. I have to start by telling you that my mother was a spiritual leader of my household and she introduced me to Jesus when I was four years old. Early in my teenage years, uh, I knew I wanted to be a physician. And in those days, this, these were the 60s when I grew up. That, that was a very tumultuous time. Uh, there was a lot of rebellion, young people rebelling. They thought they wanted freedom. Freedom has naturally has boundaries when it's true freedom. But when I went to college, um, many of my peers at that time were seeking the same thing I was seeking, that was freedom. We shucked the boundaries of the moral underpinning that we had had as children. Um, it was during that time, I think, that I've, I've developed a, a sense of moral relativism uh, and I moved away from the tenets of the faith that I'd been taught as a child. I realized my dream of, of going to medical school and halfway through medical school, Roe versus Wade was passed down in 1973. Uh, I don't, there was not a 24-7 uh, newscast in, that, in those days. Uh, we learned about uh, Roe versus Wade through our faculty. Um, they basically were in favor of this ruling. Uh, they viewed it as a chance for women to be freed of um, the burden of an unwanted pregnancy. And coming from my background of the moral relativism, I, I bought into that argument. Uh, this really took root uh, when I became an, a resident in OBGYN though. Uh, I hadn't done abortions until then, but during the fourth month of my residency, I was introduced to the abortion procedure. We did a rotation in Planned Parenthood. You have to remember in those days, we didn't have real-time ultrasound that we have today that allows us to see the baby moving in utero. Uh, we only had our examination and our history taking to uh, determine the length of gestation of a pregnancy. Um, we didn't do abortions at that time uh, after the first trimester. Um, so it was important to be very careful in examining patients. Um, so I quickly caught on and I really became quite a good technician doing abortions. Uh, first uh, in my training and then I started moonlighting doing them. Over the next year and a half I did 700 abortions, approximately 700 abortions. Um, I was even traveling to nearby cities moonlighting doing abortions for money. Um, it all ended on a Saturday morning in July of 1977. Uh, the, that was at Planned Parenthood. Um, I guess I should tell you how an abortion is done. I think one of the problems that we have in uh, talking about abortion and the pro-choice movement is that we think of abortion in the abstract. We don't think of it as reality. I hold in my hand a uh, small curette. This is a flexible six millimeter curette. They make them in much larger sizes, but the larger sizes, you have to dilate the cervix even more. Uh, this is okay for uh, an abortion up to about six weeks. The cervix is dilated ahead of time and this, and this tube is passed into the, into the uterus through the cervix. The other end of this is attached to a suction tubing and the other end of the suction tubing is uh, connected to a vacuum, a very powerful vacuum. It's at least 20 or 30 times the power of your vacuum cleaner at home. 
and that suction is applied right through the tip of that catheter. What that does is it pulls the amniotic sac into the tube and ruptures the membranes. Uh, the the um, sac of fluid is called the amniotic sac, and in a six to seven week pregnancy, there's about a tablespoon of amniotic fluid that comes first. At about six weeks, you can get most of the pregnancy tissue through there. But after about six weeks, that little hole there, the baby is much bigger than that. And it won't go through that. So as we pull the membranes through, we remove the catheter and we use a pair of metal forceps to go in and remove the pregnancy. Uh, this is usually done by pulling the baby apart in pieces. Um, after the procedure is done, the abortionist's task is not finished. He has to reassemble the baby uh, after it's done to be sure all the parts are removed. Now I speak of this coldly, much like a, uh, a pathologist would do an autopsy, and that's really the way abortionists approach the procedure. They're detached and not part of actually what's happening. Well, this all came to a grinding halt that, that Saturday at Planned Parenthood. I put the catheter, and the cervix had already dilated, I put the catheter into the uterus and started the suction. Instead of a tablespoon of amniotic fluid, I got more like about a quart of amniotic fluid. And then it, the baby kicked me. It was the first time I realized I was taking a human life. I had a one-year-old at home and I knew what a kick was all about. That really made me rethink what I was doing. That young lady had to be taken to the operating room where the baby was dismembered and removed. Now, the problem with that was that she was much further along than we had thought. Uh, the faculty had made a bad mistake in judging the uterine size. She was about five months pregnant. I'd like to say I became a convert at that point, but it, it really took a lot longer than that. Fast forward about five years. Um, I was in private practice. Uh, my wife and I had two children and she was pregnant with our third child. Uh, one night she told me, she said, you know, I feel like I did when I was going into labor with the other two. And the problem was she was only 26 weeks long. She was in preterm labor, advanced preterm labor. And despite our best efforts to stop her labor, she delivered Matthew. Matthew weighed two pounds and three ounces when he was born. He lost down to one pound and 11 ounces. Now in 1982, that was practically a death sentence. Uh, it, it was the cusp of viability, but praise the Lord, he survived. And not only survived, he's, he's with us today and doing well. But then I had a problem uh, getting my arms around the fact that the neonatologists were working around the clock to save my son's life. And in another facility, they were aborting babies that same gestational age. Now that's the scientific reason that I became pro-life because I realized that no matter how far along pregnancy is, it's still a baby. The spiritual part of my journey happened another decade, almost a decade later, when I was reintroduced to the Jesus my mother had introduced me to. And that led me to read scripture and understand about the sanctity of life. And I'd like to really talk to uh, people who are watching this video, both those who have had an abortion or who are abortion providers or working in abortion clinics. There is a better way. Uh, no matter whether a woman celebrates her abortion or is grieved by her abortion, there is a wound there. I practiced for 40 years and I have grieved with my patients. 
I have uncovered wounds that have been uh, covered up for years. The wound is still there. And how you deal with that, there's only one way. And that's through Jesus Christ. You see these hands? These hands destroyed over 700 babies. Those 700 babies are speaking through me right now. Their lives are not taken in vain. I'm having the opportunity to speak to you today, but I want to tell you, Jesus has forgiven me. It's, uh, he takes all of that sin with him. He takes all of my guilt and my shame. It's gone. And that same freedom is there for you if you're still dealing with this. He died and was resurrected, the Son of God. He, had a, he didn't deserve to die. He was blameless. But he took our sin with him. He took my abortion sins with him. And he can take yours too. So if you're struggling with this, if you're, if you're hurting, it's a very simple thing. Whether you uh, are doubting what I'm saying or not, just simply get in a quiet place and tell him what you've done. Ask him to forgive you. Jesus said, he who comes to me in faith, I will in no wise cast out. So you have his word, he will hear you. I came, became aware of a passage of scripture, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that says, if anyone uh, is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, behold, the new has come. And that's exactly what happened in my life. The old passed away. Jesus took that old part of me and did away with it. And if you haven't experienced that peace and joy, uh, it's amazing. I can speak of it personally.